ready to launch off. If you want to be part of the launch off impact on LinkedIn, And howdy, howdy, howdy. Oh, that was a good start, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. Howdy, 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 and welcome to the launch off. I am Diana Nguyen, your host, and we are in season two of episode two, and I'm very excited to be interviewing my guest. But before I bring her on, um, welcome to the show. What is the launch off? The launch off is talking to entrepreneurs, small businesses, um, about how they have continually shifted their career to be where they are and the launch off is you know counting down in five four three two one of you know blasting off and doing what they love and um we are blasting off live on restream we are on uh four platforms at the moment we're on twitter YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and you can click more about Restream and go live on 30 plus other platforms as well. And if you click on my link, you get $19 off. So thank you for partnering with Restream. And uh, I do want to ask you, uh, where are you watching from? Let us know where you are watching this show from. Uh, I know there are quite a few people who <laughs> have booked to mart. Uh, this interview that I have with our next guest because this woman is extraordinary. I've known her for about four years now and I remember meeting her for the first time in her home. Now just remember this, this is, we were just a connection on LinkedIn. Uh, she had a, a, a created a buffet of food for me. I convinced her to sing to sing Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston in her living room, and we did belly uh, belly dancing. And I have to say, um, what a wonderful way to meet someone in in that kind of setting. And just reminding you, it's LinkedIn. And over the years, we've forged such a beautiful friendship. And she has been um, momentous in my growth and I just remember was uh I just remember being in her in her dining room eating and she looked at me and said you're not okay and that has sat with me for a really long time and we're going to talk about it because it's all about mindset isn't it so let us know where you're watching from and I'm very excited to bring on my guests on the launch of season two episode two please welcome Tima El Hajj. Welcome, Tima. What a beautiful introduction. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks you for the clap, Diana. I deserve that clap. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and I can see some people in the room. Hey, Doug. Hello. Maria and you know, and Richard. that dining room that I was just talking about is actually the one behind you right now. Yep. That's the place where I was trying to manipulate you so that we don't do karaoke, but that didn't actually happen. You still made me do it. I was adamant. I said, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going to sing. And then I eventually sang. So <laughs> it was really not something I was planning on doing. And I, I just don't remember... Um, I, I know all well, people have commented and saying, are you singing again? I was like, no, that was a different, that was a different show. We are not singing again. Um, That's right. But welcome to the show. And I want to start off with this question because you have instilled this question into, into me, which is the term of uh, mm -hmm. who is your CEO? Because I now call my niece my CEO because it's come from you. Who is the CEO? <laughs> My CEO is my daughter. She basically is, or she runs my life. She's my everything. She's my inspiration, as cliche as that sounds. She's like my compass to everything that I'm doing, really. So it's incredible the amount of strength that she gives me, even though she doesn't really know. So no pressure, Zara. <laughs> she pretty much does all of that for me. <laughs> And yeah, so now nowadays I call my niece my CEO because now I, I want to instill her that power of a mindset of a CEO. And it's something that you have really um, transformed here on LinkedIn and talked about, which is the limitless mindset. Could you tell us about that? Because, you know, 
the work has been about that limit, limitless mindset? Well, that really just came from uh, my own personal development journey, if you like. That word is so overused. I wish there was another word I can think of, but just that whole process of when I was really going through this point in my life where I genuinely just thought, well, this is just who I am. And I had always felt that way. I knew that I was really smart. I knew all of those sort of things, but I didn't realize that I could actually change myself and actually improve myself to a point where I could become this woman that I had always wanted to become. By the way, I'm not that woman yet. And I don't think I ever will be because this is a forever everyday process. And this limitless belief really came from a book that I read, which is called um, Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck. And when I read that book, it really changed the way I looked at myself. And it allowed me to look at myself um, in, in a way that, well, I am a student of this world and I am a student in general and I love learning. And this learning process really helps me continue to be curious, which continues to help me to constantly be limitless because when you have that growth mindset and you, and you actually understand what that actually means, where you can actually uh, construct yourself to be this person that you've always wanted to be mm. and versus the, well, this is who I am this is my family history, this is my situation, I can't ever change that. And that's actually not necessarily true. There are so many things that we can actually develop and improve. And obviously it takes time. And I applied that growth mindset where I wanted to, I really was very desperate at that point in my life where I'm like, okay, I just need to change. I need to be this other woman that I've always wanted to be. Mm. And, uh, and I just need to become that. And that limitless concept uh, was an extension of something I used to always say at work. Well, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. And then I thought about that and I thought, well, that's kind of limiting myself as well. And I know that I can go beyond the sky. So why can't I just say, well, I am limitless as long as I believe that I am. And as long as that I apply <laughs> apply those things that will help me become limitless. Mm -hmm. And as long as I see myself as this student, as this person that is continuing to develop and grow over time, and if there's no final destination, everything was so finite for me, Diana. Everything felt like there had to be an end point. And I think that that's what really, what helped, what really stopped me from progressing. And now I don't see an end point for really anything that's really been very 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 helpful yeah I, I love that image of the sky and I, when I think about you know limitless for me is the ocean and that's why I go surfing because in nature you know you do you go for walk walks in nature you mm -hmm. know in nature you anything's possible like you are really nothing in the ocean uh, unless mm -hmm. you decide to paddle out there and go for it um I I do want to invite our audience to ask Tima a question. This is your chance to have one-on-one -on -one with Tima and, you know, ask her any question. We do have questions from our audience um, that have asked over the last two days and we'll be touching on Deconstructed Success podcasts, uh, which I'm really interested in dissecting the Tima. Uh, and before we talk about the podcast, I want to dissect your success and your story because you know, the reason why I love the launch off is that you haven't just stayed with one career and you just said it before, you decided that you wanted to be the woman that you wanted to be. <clears throat> and so you worked in financial advising. I know you've dibble dabbled in fashion design and it's clear why you would because you, you, ha you have an artistic eye. <laughs> <laughs> but then you launched onto LinkedIn in, and like you really got into LinkedIn in 2018. Could you tell us the journey of you know, why you moved from financial advising, tried out different things and be where you are, which is, you know, founder of your <laughs> own company, which is Tima Media. Gosh, when you said 2018, I lost track of time. These lockdowns, I've forgotten what year it is. I'm like, was that really, two, was it 2019? When was it? It's so true, right? So, um so yeah, so sorry. Can you just repeat your question? I was I was re reminiscing as you were talking, and I was reading Doug's comment about how I improved his, improved his driving skills. So I'm so sorry, Diana. Can you just ask me that question again? <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> well, it's basically your story. Like from what was the transition? What, what was the transition for you to go to go from financial advising to dibble, dibbling in fashion? And now being where you are now as the founder of your own media company. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a very long story, but I'll make it quite short for the audience. Um, and thank you for everyone that's joining. And I can see there's people all over the world. And hello, Maria from London. I want to go to London. It looks so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to go there. Um, when I, uh, for a long, long time, Diana, I mean, you know this story, but I, I, I was in the financial planning for a very long time and I thought I enjoyed it for a long time, but I knew that there was a part of me that I didn't necessarily want to be in that industry for forever. But, you know, back then there was no YouTube. I feel so old now when I say that there was social media wasn't used in the way that it is now. And the world was different. I did my double degree in business. I did my qualifications in financial planning and, I've, and that's pretty much it. Like what else can you do after that? You feel like moving careers is very, very tricky and very challenging. And I am one of those people where if I'll see someone that's doing really something quite amazing and they say a lawyer, I'll be like, well, yeah, I can be a lawyer. I'll be the best lawyer. I'll, all I need to do is just go do the course and I'll be the best lawyer ever. And I've always had that attitude, but um, but I felt like I was quite stuck in the financial planning industry because that's all I knew. Um, but for a long time, I wasn't really happy in the industry. It just wasn't very fulfilling. I was good at it. People loved dealing with me. Um, I eventually had a practice that I ran with a couple of other people and we all had our own clients and um, but I just didn't feel that excited <laughs> about about the industry anymore. <laughs> Sorry, this is that weird cough that I was telling you about, Diana. Um, so it took me a, a good couple of years to make the decision to leave, but that whole process didn't happen just like just thinking about it over those two years. I, I had uh, my daughter, Zara, and I was on maternity leave, but I was planning on going back within like three to six months. You know, I was that woman that was like, there's no way, there's just no way I would be home. I want to go back to work. I want to continue for, to fulfill my career. And, and my career has always been huge for me. And uh, But <laughs> there were a lot of reasons why I couldn't go back to work. Um, we had some health issues uh with Zara at the time so my my focus was just her nothing else mattered and when I took that break from work um I thought you know what why don't I just set up a fashion label like it was literally that kind of decision making process I've always loved clothes and I always struggled finding clothes for work and I didn't want to look like a man at work and I wanted to look feminine and feel beautiful and feel powerful and all those sort of things so I set up my fashion label whilst I was home and then I realized in that process that I'm like, this is kind of fun working for myself. I don't really think I want to go back working for someone and, and having that, if you want to even call it flexibility, let's be real, when you're working for yourself, it's you sort of have flexibility, but you don't because you're working crazy long hours. Yeah. Um, I, it meant that I could obviously be home with Zara and everything, but I was still very driven and still working crazy hours and, and building this fashion label from scratch. Mm. Um, and in that process, <laughs> I also opened, uh, that's when I set up my financial planning practice. And I was very, very busy at the time, crazy busy. And two, two, about two or three years into that, I realized <laughs> that I didn't want to do financial planning anymore. But it took me to leave the industry and have a break to then come back into it and have a child in the process that made me realize that I just can't live like this anymore. And there were a lot of things that happened in the process where I was going through this very dark phase and um, and I had a number of miscarriages, which really, really brought me down quite a lot, actually. And it really made me rethink about everything in my life. And that was really the, if you want to call it the turning point, the thing that made me question, <laughs> like, what's actually going on in my life at the moment? Why? Why am I having all of these losses? What, you know, am I causing them? Like, is it the emotional feelings that I'm having in where I am in my life right now? And it was really quite devastating. Um, to be honest, I still struggle with those moments um, because I still feel like real losses. They always will feel like real losses to me. And, uh, and then I 
said, okay, well, you know, this is like a sign, like I need to take these signs seriously and I need to do something that is going to make me feel fulfilled in some way because I wasn't feeling fulfilled at all because at a point that was like at my breaking point. And and I kept thinking of these words for about four or five years, you know, education, impact, inspiration, and uh, and inspire, uh, communication, excuse me. And uh, and this is where I had always wanted to set up a podcast. And I said, okay, I'm going to leave financial planning, set up a podcast. And that was really the the next step. And uh, and that's what I did. I sold my business and I said, okay. I'm financially prepared now because that's what I did. I made sure that I was financially prepared to do it and uh, and then set up this podcast. And LinkedIn came into mind because my professional background, I was too intimidated to go onto Instagram because I didn't think I was young enough or pretty enough or cute enough to be on Instagram because it's just not my my approach. I'm not cute, if that makes sense. Um, and uh and, um, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Stop it, Diana. I'm not hot. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, like back then, um, even in 2018, Instagram was very influencer ish, if that makes sense. Like, you know, it was all about the unboxings and all about all these sort of things. And I'm like, this is not really my space. And I didn't know LinkedIn just launched video, by the way. So I just literally came in at the right time. I posted a video. And then um, there were like two comments from people I didn't know. I'm like, that's a win. They're not my cousins. They're not my parents. I'm pretty excited. Yes. And I was actually quite happy because I knew more people on Instagram and Facebook than I did LinkedIn. So LinkedIn was kind of like no one really knew what I was doing. And mm. I felt so safe. Um, and and then, yeah, and then everything kind of exploded from there. And I literally didn't know that LinkedIn just brought out video and I didn't know that um, that I was going to enjoy doing video because I'm, I'm quite shy like on camera and on video. Um, people wonder if that's actually true, but it is. Like I was that person, D. if someone was going to take a picture, I'll somehow like, you know, oh, <laughs> you know. Oh you, oh, you took the picture. Oh, okay, sorry. I just missed the just missed the picture. So you know, I am one of those people. I, I am quite shy um, behind camera. So in front of the camera, sorry. So that's really how it all happened. It wasn't like I woke up <laughs> woke up saying, "I want to take over LinkedIn." Mm. It was I have a message, and I want to talk about it. And I'm just going to try and record a video and just talk about an episode that I shared. And I just want to promote, promote my podcast. And that's really how it all started. It's it's crazy when I think about it. I, I like just to think back of who I was and I'm a very different person now, extremely different. I've evolved so much since then, mm. but I literally, <laughs> I had nothing to lose because I had lost so much my happiness, um, my, my, you know, my, my pregnancies and all those sort of things. It was sort of like, what, what else can I lose? People laugh at my video. That's okay. It was only like a 20, <laughs> 25 second video anyway, which took me by the way, like 15 minutes to do. So <laughs> yeah. it was not a 25 second video. I just want to say thank you for sharing your heart here. Um, because I know, uh, I know how devastating that what that that um I've never had miscarriages before but I know the love that you have for children and the love that you have for your daughter but also family like you have beautiful Instagram stories of your family um <laughs> so I know how uh family and you know coming from our cultural backgrounds family is so important and that something you woke in you when you like there needs there needs to be something else and I have a message to share and it's perfect that you know the you know LinkedIn like that's what happened in 2017 2018 that no one really understood what LinkedIn was but you took a chance and you know and have created this communities right behind you um and and listen to your message and your podcast that you have on just for anyone that is wanting to jump on LinkedIn you you have made some videos about presentation and showing up and everyone who's watching this, when Timo showed up beforehand to get us warmed up, I was like, oh, no, I've got to zhuzh my hair. <laughs> <laughs> T 
Tima has done my makeup before and it's been stunning and I reaped rewards for it. But, <laughs> Tima, what is your tip for showing up on LinkedIn? Um, like in terms of consistency or, or physically or Phys what, physically what? because you, you did do a video about you know and you talk about being uh, in the woman in you um and and you don't you, know, you talked about your fashion label that you created was to dress as a woman yeah. or, or anyone showing up on linkedin and um, wanting to present themselves yeah is there any tips that you would give for someone who you know just needs a quick team a tip <laughs> a quick team a tip <laughs> Don't cough like me right now because uh, you need to control yourself and be a bit more professional, Tima. <laughs> uh, the, one of the first things I always tell people is to really dress as the person that people would meet in real life. Like, don't be any any different than that. I mean, look, if you wear pyjamas all day, you might need to make a little bit of an effort. Um, but I would say just wear something that's really comfortable but makes you feel confident as well something that's going to make you feel strong and powerful. And I think confidence is such an important thing. You know, you may not necessarily have all the right words, but even if you just sat there and just felt confident, no matter whatever you're delivering, the way you deliver it when you're feeling confident makes a huge difference. And for me, I look, <laughs> I think, um, <clears throat> I'm so sorry about all the coughing. I think I, I don't think I personally overdo it, but I think of everything. I look at all the fine details, like, you know, the cushions and the lighting and am I sitting in the middle and what am I wearing? What color am I wearing? Um, how do I want people to feel when they're watching me? In, especially with the colors as well. I think colors are really important. Now, I'm not saying anybody needs to go down that path, but in terms of um, presenting and, and physically showing up, just wear something that makes you feel confident. You know, if you were to go to um, someone's house or a dinner or an interview, like, what are you going to wear? You're going to wear something that's just going to make you feel amazing. And I think clothing is a huge part of it or jewellery or a tie for men or a pair of socks. No one needs to see them. Just whatever it is, um, a bit of lipstick, a certain colour that makes you feel great. For me, I do. I love feeling feminine. I love feeling strong through that mm. and uh and it, it was a, a bit of a struggle <laughs> in the past you know in, when I first started my corporate career the mixed messages that I had from the women in the offices that I worked in that it was almost uh forbidden to be feminine and forbidden to be female and I'm such a female female such a girly girl that um it goes against my nature and creating content allows me to have fun with that so yeah. you know I do my hair and my makeup not because I'm on camera but that's just because that's who I am I mean you, you visited me impromptu at home and it's not like I look any different so um yeah you've got to be yourself and dress as who you are and you don't want people to meet you and not recognize who you are mm. and uh and the good thing with LinkedIn is they don't have any filters so you know no filters no if you are uh, if you use some kind of filter and somebody meets you and they don't know who you are then there's a real problem unfortunately but um that's instagram for you <laughs> but um i would just say honestly just however you are in the real world just be be that on camera and and um <laughs> and nothing else so sorry everybody i'm not feeling very well this cough i i try and control it and when i try and suppress it that's when i cough like that so Apologies if you're all struggling to hear me cough like this <laughs> and speak in the process. So <clears throat> there you grab, go, Dee. I hope that answers your question. No, grab some water if you need to. Um, and, yeah, I do. I, every time I do see Tima, when we go out or catch up or meet up with um, Kiki and Noren, who are, are good friends, Tima does look exactly the way you look. Like, like there is no <laughs> there is no casual. She's stunning. And it actually... Um, yeah, like seeing you turn up made me turn up too, if that makes sense. So that's um that's power in itself, Tima. <laughs> and she would do Thanks, that. <laughs> With a little flip on the side. <laughs> um, if you are joining us, um, Tima just gave us a video tip for LinkedIn. Show up as who you are, dress in colours. Um, we are powered by Restream. You can click on the link and, um, you know, get onto platforms. We are going live on Twitter, YouTube. 
uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. And I just want to go to our chat box right now. So we've got Richard Sin joining us. We've got Doug. Thanks for joining us, Doug. He did message us and <laughs> say, I'm coming on to watch you guys. Uh, we have New Zealand. Uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, we have Maria from London. Uh, we have Mel from Melbourne watching via LinkedIn. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we have um, watching from Melbourne. Thanks, Bin. Uh, Mel has said she's watching via Twitter reminder. So Twitter does work. So get on to Twitter, everyone. Um, yes, Doug has written. He's such a fan of you. Doug's actually has gone to, to have his dinner because it's America right now. He's not a fan. He left. Doug, he <laughs> left. You are no longer a fan. We are no longer friends. <laughs> um, but Doug can say he does remember that episode, Tima, that podcast episode. And Doug is it Doug is a team a team Tima because he when I first met him in in Dallas uh, two years ago, he said that Tima helps me get through <clears throat> our traffic. <laughs> I know, and that was the whole purpose of my podcast. Of course, my whole purpose was how can I get people through traffic and not kill themselves in the process. <laughs> so thank you, Doug. You've completely um, found the reasons why I set up this podcast. No, it was it made me laugh when he said that to me, uh, <laughs> and. And it's it's such a beautiful compliment, actually, because um, it can be stressful when you're driving. It can. And I know what he's referring to because uh, he has mentioned to me that he thinks that my voice is very calming. Maybe not today, um, that my voice is very calming <laughs> and that people enjoy listening to me talk, I guess, which yes. is very interesting to me. Um, and I have been told that I should do meditation uh, I would videos like and uh podcast <laughs> i will do it with this cough 100 percent. i'll record a 15 minute meditation with the way i feel right now and not only will that make you feel relaxed because you'll feel a lot healthier than me it will also wake you up and make you want to start your day because of these coughs <laughs> um, hi from philadelphia uh, lila hey lila uh, she loves us That's we love saying. lila um paris is joining us from sydney thank you for joining us paris, hey, paris. uh rob Love the rapper paris. rob the rapper is on board and we've got hey, who is snorting along when i snort <laughs> thank you keith <laughs> we're, we're gonna launch into your podcast because we've it was a natural segue mm -hmm. um uh, and your podcast is called deconstructing success and you know you've talked about you starting your podcast before you jumped into LinkedIn, but that has had a transformation, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, I of course it has. I think everything I do will eventually have transformations in the process. Um, yeah, it was it was originally called Team of the Podcast, which was fine, by the way. It's not like I hated the name or anything. It, it was just a, a name that I came up with last minute because I just wanted to launch the podcast and. Originally, I wanted to call my podcast Deconstructed Entrepreneur, but this is what happens, Dee. You ask people for their opinions and then you get influenced. And at the time, I was not as confident and not as strong as I am now within myself. And I asked some people that had podcasts and I said, Deconstructed Entrepreneur, that sounds ridiculous. Like, it makes no sense. Why would you even call it that? And then um, <laughs> and they're like, uh, they said, oh, well, it's, it's a ridiculous name. And so I thought, oh, I'll just call it Team of the Podcast. And then, um, and then I thought, well, no one knows who Team is. Like that's ridiculous. Like who who cares who Team of the podcast is? <laughs> and then I just thought, you know what? Let's just just go with it and just launch it. And that's exactly what I did. But every time I would interview someone and I'd say Team of the podcast, I would feel like this just doesn't feel like what I really want it to be. And last year, um, with the lockdown, I thought about this is time, maybe I should just rename it. And then uh, deconstructing success came about because I am obsessed with success. I'm obsessed with stories of success and how people become successful. And I'm talking about all types of success, but of course, financial success, because I'm very drawn to that. I love business and I love learning about business. And, um, and the deconstructing part is really how my my mind works and i am constantly de 
deconstructing concepts and people's minds. And even when I have conversations with people, I really do want to pull things apart so I can understand how these things work. Mm -hmm. And that's the concept of deconstructing success is that the conversation is so that I can deconstruct it all to make it easy for people to apply some of the stories or lessons <laughs> or strategies or approaches that these people have have implemented to create the success in their life and uh, and that's what why that podcast exists i i really am obsessed with with um especially financial success i find it so incredible and so inspiring when you hear of people that have made like 600 million dollars and you think well if they can do it well, why can't i and why can't everybody else so and I think we just live in such an incredible time where this information can be shared so easily and being a part of it and knowing that I can be a part of it is actually really quite exciting. So, yeah, so the podcast for me is really my passion. Um, and even the word deconstructing success, there's so many things that we can deconstruct, like deconstructing mental health, deconstructing happiness, deconstructing relationships. So that success is really a representation of all of those things, not just financial success, even though I have a real love for that and yeah. a real love for business. So that's really what that podcast is about. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's something that I, I really, really love doing and I'm, I hope to do more of it in the future. So. And I love, I love process. So, you know, you just mentioned that the reason why you interview these people um, and your guests are pretty amazing. You're not just you know, the average Joe down the road. But I love the process because like the snort class for me, it's interviewing comedians to talk about process, how to be funny. It's not like, you know, you get on stage and do your thing, but you're investigating, exploring. So how do I get from A to B to be where you are? And I just want to mention the people that you have um, interviewed, I hope I spelled the card don't right, um, and the co-founder of Netflix, okay. are, <laughs> e, are one of your guests, how do you get these people onto your podcast? <clears throat> That's what I want to deconstruct with you. How do you do that? Oh, we've run out of time, Diana. Thank you so much for having me on. No. <laughs> I just want to quickly say hi to Noreen. Noreen, we love you. Thank you for joining. Um, that's a really good question. Honestly, uh, a huge part of it is my LinkedIn. It really is um, my LinkedIn profile, my the content that I've put out. When I approach people, I initially try and start off with my LinkedIn profile because I know that there's um, value there. I know that I've got a great reputation uh, and that if people were to look at my profile, they'll know what, it, what it's all about. So really mainly LinkedIn um, and Instagram. And I literally just make it very easy for myself. I just approach them. You just send them a message. You get rejected about 3,000 times, but you just keep moving forward and you just keep asking. And uh, and that's exactly what I do. And uh, and so, yeah, so that's how I get my guests. It's, there's no secret to it. And that's the truth. People think that I know other people that know other people. There has been maybe one interview where I have asked someone, hey, do you know these people? But I find that really hard to do, Diana. <laughs> I, I know people that know a lot of other people, but I have this thing where I just want to figure it out on my own. If I can get that interview without anyone to help me, which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with getting that help. But I find it really exciting to go, okay, that person's chosen to come onto my podcast, not because they know so-and-so, but because they've they've chosen or their team's told them to, which is always the best thing when their team goes, okay, you need to go onto this podcast. So so yeah, that's how I do it. It's, there's no there's no, no secret to it. It's just mm -hmm. like, um, which I find incredible when people have approached me <laughs> and they said, oh, look, you know, I've only got a thousand followers you know would you mind coming on tomorrow I'm like of course I would like why would I say no and then they're like in shock and I'm thinking it's just because you've asked a question so I think like I'm nothing special mm. what if um what if these other people that I think are incredible think and feel the same way that I do which I'm sure they do because they just see themselves as humans I mean mostly some most of these I guess bigger people do and they are just human so I don't feel intimidated at all I just think um, it's just fun. It's a fun way to <laughs> to see well who's going to accept to come onto my show, yeah. and who doesn't will regret it in the future. No, <laughs> <laughs> they will because um, instead of being you know episode ten of your 
podcast, they'll be pushed down to episode 200. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just, I think you've just nailed it, which is, you know, get onto LinkedIn and, you know, um, connect with them and say, hey, this is my profile uh, and this is my podcast. And I, I totally understand about, um, but but with, with LinkedIn, I find like, because it's such um, an abnormal place to approach someone compared to Instagram, because usually these these people have huge followings on Instagram, don't they? So they LinkedIn creates, creates a shortcut to get to them. It cuts the noise. And another tip, don't overdo it. Just invite them. Don't give them your history and make it really easy for them to read. Like no one wants to read five paragraphs. No. Just say, hey, Diana, I love your work. I watched your recent video. I really would love for you to come onto my podcast. How can we make it happen? Like it's that simple. If I, in the past I have given my whole life story, I've been so, you know, giving them the whole, you've inspired me and this is what I've done and which are all, <laughs> which I, I'm sure they appreciated that, but I've made them work to read my message. What mm -hmm. if they've just flicked through and said, oh my gosh, another, another long message to read. I don't have time. <laughs> so make it really easy yeah. and just get straight to the point. <laughs> and if they say mm -hmm. no, try again. And, um, if you have a question for Tima, we've got a couple of questions here from our audience on LinkedIn. Uh, Tima, from Jane from Perth, Australia, she's asked, how do you discover your calling? Because you've had a couple of them. How have you acted on your calling? Okay. How do you discover your calling? Mm. Even the word you're calling, gosh, it's so much pressure, isn't it? Just to figure it out. And it's such a great question. I was looking, let's just, I'll refer to it as my purpose because that's what I think a calling is. It's the same thing. And I felt like I was looking for my purpose for years, for most of my life, let's be honest, for most of my life, I was looking for my purpose. And then I I decided, well, not that I decided, but during that period that we discussed earlier on, <laughs> during this dark period, uh, I had a moment where I'm like, what am I actually looking for? Something I've actually never lost. Like I've never lost my purpose. So I feel like I'm looking for something that I've never lost. And this whole calling concept is that it, it doesn't just come to you. I know people have said, oh, and then one day I woke up and I realized that I wanted to be. And I don't know if it really happens that way. And if it has for some people, that's amazing. But for the rest of us, it's very depressing when you don't figure it out it's very sad and it's very there's so much pressure you can put on yourself and uh it's um you're not in a good space when you're trying to figure it all out mm -hmm. and the one thing <laughs> that i said to myself was well if i haven't lost this calling or if this calling hasn't come to me yet then i can just create it i don't have time to waste anymore i'm not 25 i'm not 21 i'm not this cute young female anymore d you know I, so i just said okay i'm just going to create it for myself and that's exactly what i did jane just to let you know i i just said okay who is this woman that i want to become what is this identity how does she um deal with stressful situations what would she do in this moment would she be complacent would she just take the situation and just move forward and figure it out on her own and so these are the conversations that i had in my head you know what would she do financially um how would she deal with challenges so these are the things that helped me really discover um, and really create this purpose for myself now it was very scary because, and it still is, because I'm like, well, what if I get it wrong? You know, what if I get it wrong? And I thought to myself, well, that's okay. I'm trying. And the only way I will know is to have, to be curious about something and then to actually act on it. Mm. And so that's really how I feel helps really discover your calling. I don't think that this calling comes to us. It comes to some people and I think it's one of those miracles that just happens for some. But for a lot of us, depending on your own personal and self-awareness too, if you if you don't have that self-awareness, that calling may have come, but you may have missed it. Mm. For whatever reason, you may have been dis distracted by other things in your life or maybe you didn't feel worthy enough to get that calling, to, to see that that calling was there. 
And so I think that this is why I didn't want to make it hard for myself. I just said, okay, how can I make this as easy as possible? What am I curious about? Okay, well, I'm curious about the brain. I'm curious about the mind. I'm curious about influencing people with my words um, and, uh, you know, leading people through feeling and emotion. These are all the things that I'm curious about. And so that's how <laughs> I started off, Jane. Just that, that's the truth. That's how I started off is I went through the <laughs> process of initially, who is this woman? Who do I want to become? What are the identity? What is her identity? <clears throat> what are the behaviors that she needs to put into place to bring this identity to life? So let's say, for example, this woman <laughs> was um, financially de- uh, independent. She was able to make decisions very quickly. So for me, the behaviors that I had to apply, well, okay, um, to be financially dependent meant that I had to be financially secure that I wouldn't be acting out on dis- desperation. I wouldn't be making decisions out of desperation. Uh, and I never wanted to come across as desperate. So having that financial security was really, really important for me. The other concept of this identity of this woman is that she can make decisions on her own because at the time I felt like I had to consult with all these people. You know, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And the behavior was no more asking people trust in yourself do the research for yourself figure it out on your own and uh and and that's really how it all started jane but i mean i can go into it more and more but i know that we don't have enough time but jane if you've got any other questions just reach out to me but it really just starts off with curiosity trying different things and allowing yourself to be real with yourself and go okay do i like this or do i not yeah and if you do keep going if you don't stop go to something else and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that like we live in an incredible time where we can actually do that so I I really love the word curious because I feel like when I hear that word childlike when a child curious about something they go and they test it out so I think um that's a, a beautiful way of investigating something that might be an interest to you and you know change the course of where you are um where you are now. I've got another question um, from a good friend of ours, uh, Olivia Rose Solomons. She's asked two questions, but you can ask answer one of them because you do talk about imposter syndrome. You, you've got this beautiful video um, that articulates the imposter syndrome. Um, Olivia's asked, how how would you deal with self sabotage? I'll write that question again. Uh, and how does she work with sabotages? Okay, so Olivia, because you're not here, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. I'll have to get back to you at Diana's next slide. <laughs> of course, Olivia. Thank you so much. We love Olivia. Um, imposter syndrome, it's such an interesting, interesting concept. And a lot more people go or experience it. I won't say suffer because it's such a strong word, but we experience imposter syndrome. So many of us do. And I think a lot of people online do, but we just don't talk about it as much. And it really comes back to, I've been like studying this for so long and really delving into it for so long because I've experienced this many times and I still do. Mm. It really comes back to self-love and self-worth. And I know that sounds really cliche, but it really, really does. Um, if you truly are connected with yourself and you truly love yourself, uh, you will feel worthy enough to accept everything that comes your way. Mm. And having self-doubt is not necessarily a bad thing because it can make you improve yourself if it's used and leveraged well. But what a lot of us do is that we don't allow us to leverage from that as a positive. We allow it to bring us down and question ourselves and really build more doubt within ourselves. Um, And the internal dialogue is really connected to that self-love and that self-worth that we have because whatever you're saying in your head is what you think of yourself and how you feel about yourself. And this is where the imposter syndrome comes into play. Uh, And what's really interesting is that a majority of the things that we're telling ourselves are actually not true. They're just stories that we're saying to ourselves, but they feel real because our brain really doesn't know the difference between reality and what's not real. Mm -hmm. So, of course, these stories are going to feel real in our mind. 
and uh, and we can create self destruction in the process because it feels really quite comfortable, even though it's painful, because it's it's a it's a uh, it's something that is um, uh, what's the word? It it's familiar. Mm -hmm. So this fam familiar familiarity of this feeling of uh, this negative internal dialogue. It feels comfortable, so so why would you want to come out of it, even though it's painful? But that pain is quite comfortable, mm. and then to deviate from that, that's where you start to feel so uncomfortable to the point where you feel a little bit chaotic. You start to question yourself even more, and your body and your mind are fighting back because you're now pulling yourself out of this comfort zone, and it's just another skill that you need to build. It's another habit that you need to work through, and that's what it is. It's reminding yourself that these stories are literally stories where is the evidence that's something that i mentioned in the video where is the evidence most of the time there is really no evidence and uh and you can laugh it off and go okay well if there's no evidence then i need to build the evidence that i actually can do it and build your confidence through that versus talking yourself out of it mm. so I hope that helps um, if anyone has experienced that or is going through that. And uh, and it really, you need to trust yourself. I know that for myself, <laughs> for a long time, I didn't know how to trust myself anymore. And the only way that I could was to trust myself, if that makes sense, put myself in situations and say, okay, so what am I going to do today? Or what am I going to do here without asking for anyone's opinion or wondering what somebody else has done? What would I Tima, the human being, do in this moment, and and that's a really powerful question that you can ask yourself. And uh, and it's amazing how much you can just block out the noise because we forget that we really are individuals. Yeah. You know, we we are we we're separate. We we are your your you and I me. And and we need to remember that it's okay. Like I don't have to be like anyone else. I don't. It's interesting. This world, gosh, it's so. It's crazy, isn't it, with social media? Like, we know that a, a lot of what we see online is fake. We know that. But we still believe that it's real to some degree and we place those expectations on ourselves. And what, what we've got to remember is what we see is a, a, a small moment of time of that person's life. Like, if we mm. look at what's happening in the world right now, it's really tough, this pan pandemic, but in the grand <clears throat> scheme of the history of the entire universe, this is a small speck. And that's exactly our thoughts mm -hmm. and what we see online. It's a small speck of everything else. And we need to put that and isolate that and go, okay, it's like a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. That's how we should take it and nothing more than that. So, so yeah, so I hope that helps. No, that's beautiful. And I, 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 you really said it really well about imposter syndrome, which is we get comfortable in the fear and that's dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> so. Yeah, it is. It is dangerous. But fear is a beautiful thing too. It see. Like it reminds you, it really does remind you. <laughs> I mean, if I'm scared to do something and I'm not talking about like literally jumping off a cliff or anything like that, I'm talking about doing things that are really uncomfortable um okay like for example this live I, I felt a little bit nervous coming on because I haven't been on a live for so long and I haven't been on a live with you for so long and I feel like I have to be extra funny you know because I'm with Diana you feel like your hair has to sit in a certain way I feel like I have to be funnier so um so yeah so you know uh it, it, it's it's those moments that make you go okay well I am scared but I'm going to be fine like I'm just going to do it and just see what happens and and again it's just that trust yourself and and just go with go with the process and remind yourself that everything is a skill and and that's a really really powerful way to look at it so beautiful um thank you Tiba for giving your time and sharing your heart and your um thoughts uh and it's been wonderful to, you know, reconnect on LinkedIn Live because it's been a while. <laughs> it has Thank been a while. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And um, if you are watching, we are joined with Richard Moore. Richard Moore is a good friend of ours as well. He'll be joining us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. because 10 a.m. is when he's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and um, so join us uh, from London time. We'll be talking about his launch off and how he's um, p- launched his career, uh, especially on LinkedIn here too. And just a reminder, Restream, um, if you want to jump on Restream and do what I'm doing right now, you can uh, with my link for ni- uh, to take off $19. And we are live on four platforms at the moment. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see you all next week. And thank you, Tima. Bye. Thank you. Bye.